Photographers are like dog walkers. When you see them, you think they're caring too much for their own good. They're outside a lot. They smell like dogs. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna help them. I'll help 10 right now. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Against my better judgment, we're in Sea Log. All I know is bad things happen to my shadows in Sea Log. So hopefully I fixed it somehow. I should get a Ninja V. Then 10 bit on an EOS R? You could not do better. Have you watched Mike Lane Ferp's channel? I've partaken in his life at times. He's an excellent birder videographer. He used Sony gear a year ago and switched to the OM-1. I like his content. Oh, did he? Yeah, I remember. But he preferred the Sony and he only switched because he's an old man. And he's like, ah, it's kind of heavier. I can barely tell. He's also blind in his right eye. Confirmed by Scientology. We've done the studies. He's a good guy. I enjoy listening to his thoughts, but he's not doing what I'm doing, which is walking. He's like in a hide with a tripod and still he went for the lighter weight Olympus. Like you could see every example, Sony looked much better than the Olympus did, even though the Olympus cost with that lens, the 150 to 400. So like, I like to walk around. Olympus is dead in my heart. They have nothing for us. Until they fix their slow motion codex, they are dead. And they likely won't because they're a sushi company now. All they're working on is how to wrap around nori sheets and what salmon to kill. Why are you filming in 1080p and upscaling, dude? The quality of video defies the quality of the content. What does that even mean? You tech yuppie. People like this have no soul. They're modern day children who were raised on iPads and they're just, they only see what LCD screens tell them to see. And they have no taste for the finer things in life. People like me and Marcus Picks, we know 1080p is enough for the human face. What, like, what are you examining here? How many beard hairs do you want to count? How many gray ones are coming in? Is that what you want? You want to see me age? 1080p is like too much for most people. I'm literally dumbfounded at the push for 8k when I'm like 4k is barely necessary unless you're filming wildlife or something interesting. But like for human faces, 720p, where is that in the menu? I'd turn that on right now if I could. 1080p man, like what the hell do you need? Why don't you review Nikon more? They are highly underrated best ergonomics and menu in business. Sure, they can't compete with Sony and video. You, you're not selling me here. You just told me they suck. But they are beast hybrids. Oh God, beast. What a beast. Beasts are like creatures who come out at night that could kill you like Dogman or Bigfoot. Like that's a beast. Don't go in a forest or Dogman might get you in certain areas. It's a spiritual entity that attacks your mind. And he exists. He's real. Don't pretend Dogman doesn't exist. I've seen him with my thoughts. Here's the reality. Nikon doesn't get it yet. They're making cameras that probably look okay. When I tried that one in Henry's, I was blown away by how bad it got. When you just lower sharpness in the camera, like how could it go so low to where you're like in a dream state? where things are like underwater, blurry and weird. It was bad. And then like, if you don't touch it, it was so over sharpened that it was like, how is this our options? It's so terrible. Like just put a flippy screen on something. Give me the Z30 body with a full frame sensor and IBIS. And then you're talking a YouTube game here. Otherwise, like I have no need for you in my life. You provide nothing. Canon? does everything I need. Sony as well. Panasonic, kind of, without the autofocus. What is Nikon doing for me? Nothing. I would love to review a Nikon, but I have not got one in. Nobody has one. Whenever I ask any camera store, it's like, can I review it? I've asked for the Z9, you think I haven't? It's like they don't have any. For some reason, even the Z6 II, even when I go into Henry's, I almost had it in my hands and someone bought it. Within that 10 minute span, I was looking at it. Someone actually bought it. Total regret, guaranteed. 
you return that thing immediately. But like, what could a Nikon possibly do that my Canon can't in here? Or my Sony can't out there? Besides animal eye detect in 8K60 raw for $20,000. I would love to test it. I just, I don't have any. Give me one. Help. I own a hybrid Sony a7 IV. I'm tempted to sell it to get two cameras. One for video, documentaries, FX30, and one for fun photography. Fuji XT4. You're a moron. God, I wish I could end your life. XT5 or upgrade to a FX3. Forget photo, go best video. What a professional view. If you call it a professional, huh? Listen, asshole. You have a perfect photo video hybrid, modern, just released, has more firmware updates than my camera from Sony, you piece of shit. Ignoring your former audience, members that paid money. You already have it. Like, what are you looking for? Once I got this lens, 24 mm 1.4, I realized I was complete. I didn't need to look out there for exciting gear to bring in here. Just use what you have. You already have way too much. Like you, if you had the FX3 and FX30 and X-T5, you'd be hoping for an A7 IV, you moron. So stick with what you have or give it to me. Yes, I'll take it. Should I buy an A7 IV or X-H2S or something else for stills, videos of wildlife, portraits, and vlogging? That is a tough one, man. A7 IV will give you the animal eye detect that might actually work. Fuji, you're gonna have to manually focus. I don't trust that animal eye detect at all, but for portraits, the X-H2S will likely have better color science. For vlogging, the Sony probably has better stabe. I don't know, they all suck. If it was me asking these questions, I'd go Sony probably. I've seen what the X-H2S can do. It ain't right. Fuji is a weird fringe company. They're fun, amazing image. Sometimes you, you wish you had it when you sold it. But like for the most part, if you want footage that actually works, you go Sony. I switched to 4K to appease the first guy who insulted me for not using it. And I wanted to show off that it barely crops at all. The EOS R 4K crop has been overrated and overstated, and you're stupid. So you see I'm up in the BC mountains fly fishing all the time. You're a fish murderer. Uh, have fun in hell. See many critters, including bears. After watching your vids, I thought it would be a nice new hobby to do some amateur wildlife videography. So you've never done it, and you're thinking, I think I'll just spend thousands of dollars on the best setup ever. Full frame. Can you recommend a budget-friendly micro loser camera? Oh, that was a plot twist. Wow, wow. Smarter than I thought. You might not get eaten by a bear. That would go with a uh, only 75 to 300. Okay, you're dumber. You're so much dumber than I thought. Oh, wow, I take all the compliments back. Probably gonna buy used in case I video my own demise, which I hope you do, sincerely. And I'm thinking a budget under 1K for the body, just give me some money to work with, 1K. You're looking bridge cam now. That's all you're getting from this whole show. Some slow-mo might be nice too. Thanks in advance. Yeah, good luck on that slow-mo bridge cam footage. So you have the 75 to 300 or you're thinking of it? Olympus is shit. They're out of business. They make sushi only. If you're looking for like good sushi, they might do it. I don't, I doubt they even do all you can eat. They're cheap. The 75 to 300, if you had to, okay, you do that. You get the OM5 just to be new. You get terrible menu systems, USB micro adapter. I mean, you could do worse. It's super light. I was fairly happy with the Olympus footage. I'm just being silly. I just, I'm so mad at their slow motion being so over sharpened and ugly that I just dismiss them. But if you're doing 4K 24P, which is boring to the human eye, then you could do worse. So go ahead, super light. I don't mind it, but just get a bridge cam, you asshole. Something like a Canon SX70 
or even the smaller one, SX740 or whatever that tiny little point and shoot is. Like you're not gonna get eaten by a bear anyway, so just lose less money. Doesn't this kind of change the whole camera buying decision equation? Let's say it can effectively two to four times the res and frames per second without noticeable artifacting. The problem is it is noticeable and artifacty. He's talking about Topaz here. This kind of negates the crappy 240p on a lot of cameras. Looking at you, XH2S, it's not going to remove that noise pattern. The horizontal freaking X-trans transsexual sensor and turns the C100 Mark II into a 4K 24 beast. Oh God, where's Dogman when you need him? Oh, I'm sending Dogman to your house right now with my mind. I hope he eats you and your family. I hope he spares your family so they can mourn you. At least, at the very least, res and frames per second become less of an important factor. Dynamic range, color signs, rolling shutter, features, usability, move up the list. Aloha, Casey. You Hawaii asshole. Must be nice and warm over there. You dick. Send up or some sun next time. Calm down. He means well. So, this topaz is kind of fun. Uh, no. It doesn't just overcome your shitty camera because... It's a pain in the ass to render. What? How I use it? I just pick a couple clips that I might want to enhance and see. Yes, it does work. It enhances them, but it always looks a little weird, and it also enhances your blurry background. That looks weird when you sharpen tonne. You don't sharpen your mind. Here's a little example. GoPro, 2.7K, 240 frames per second and I up it to 8K, 480 frames per second, and it looks better, looks kinda nice. It does enhance your footage, but if you were starting with 720p, it ain't gonna do you much. I just find when you slow things down in Topaz, you're rarely getting perfect looking footage with birds and their wings and their feathers, like it's almost unusable. Whereas up lower quality, already slow footage, is pretty good. Like doing 1080p up resing to 4K, but I still feel like there's other options. Like Da Vinci does super scale, something I didn't even know about. I just realized it. In fact, I might even super scale this video. I won't because it takes too long to render, but. And I don't know how to do a comparison because it seems you super scale, the whole timeline gets super scaled. So like you bring in a topaz and then that will be super scaled. How do you compare them? I don't even know. But the bottom line is these programs do not make up for your lack of technology and they take a lot of time. So you can't just, oh, I'm gonna just do everything in topaz and my bullshit camera is fine. Like it doesn't work in a lot of situations. It has to be perfect. So it's a rare case scenario. Still buy it through my affiliate links. The crispness, the crisp, the crispness of your, the crispness, the crispness of your footage has been enhanced ever since the Penny GH6. How are you doing with focusing in the viewfinder? Have you gotten better with it with practice or are you used to it now? I don't know that I'm getting any better. I'm trying to use it without peaking and just judging by the actual sharpness. It's not easy. I don't know. It's not fun. That is the one thing that could get me to upgrade to something else is having really reliable animal eye detect. And I have a feeling Canon would be doing it if you could just limit to like a box that size and then like only look for animals in this box. Wow. This is good content, huh? With Fuji, you put a box here and it's still looking outside the box. We're thinking outside the box. You're not special. You're just rude. So I don't know. I'm not loving that viewfinder. When I go look at the Sony viewfinder, the other day I was doing a little comparison with my friend. I'll make a separate video on it. And I was doing the Panasonic GH6 and then I switched to the Sony. I was like, wow, that is so much sharper. I can't believe they cheaped out on that viewfinder. Those who were sold by this video's favoritism towards the GH6 will regret it big time. I have both cameras and tested them in all kinds of ways. Yeah, we believe you. Both are good for your needs. The Fuji, however, is the better all-around hybrid camera, period. Poor little fanboy. He got hurt. 
He got hurt when I said the GH6 is better than the XH2. He couldn't fathom a situation where that would actually be true, even though it is for me. It has better stabe, the GH6. The autofocus was actually more reliable, not in many situations, not for wildlife, but I did a vlog and it did not lose me, whereas the Fuji often hunted and the stabe just being so jerky, it's like, what is that? And the 240 frames with all those noise patterns look disgusting. Everything about the Panasonic is better. 5.7K in 60 frames per second. You're doing 6.2 with an awkward 4.3 ratio in 30p. Yes. I liked the color science better on Panasonic. Their lenses are better. Like everything about it, tinier, smaller. For some people, Panasonic's the way better buy. I would highly recommend it as long as you don't think autofocus is an actual thing you could actually use. Just occasionally, I watched this Leica 9mm review the other day, and this guy is the worst example of that lens I've ever seen. He was walking, the thing was losing him constantly, his settings were shit, and he's like, now that we actually have good autofocus in the GH6, and I was like, what are you talking about? The whole show is going in and out, and it was so shaky. How do you walk like that? What were you doing? Just holding the camera like this with a flat hand, you piece of shit. How did you get Panasonic footage to look that shaky? I want to end you. These are the people that we have to look for reviews for. It's like, oh, 9 mil, how's that doing these days? That's the example I have to witness? Grow a sack. So I 100% stand by the GH6 is better than the Fuji in most ways. You'll have more dynamic range and possibly a more pleasing image to some. But like, that's your only thing. You're a freak who's spending all this time color grading and tweaking shadows. Oh, look at how filmic I am now. This is what matters most. The colors of my face and my shirt. I love when all the shadows are blue or red. That makes it a movie. You're not a movie. You're the guy that dies in the beginning because no one cared. Last question, let's say I shoot 99% slow motion, so I really need an ND filter, why? Or crank the shutter speed to compensate? Of course. What are the disadvantages of not using an ND slow motion clips? There's none, and I read that sentence so properly. Zero disadvantage, who cares? Freeze that motion. When it's super slow, it doesn't matter. You're not looking for motion blur. It looks so dumb. When I'm running across the street, my hand's like actually doing blur. It's bullshit. So like super slow-mo, super high shutter speeds. I just hate using NDs because sure, you could use them in the regular frame rates and it helps for that natural look, but then you switch to slow-mo and then it's like, things are never right. Your ISO rises and ISO rising in slow-mo is 10 times worse. Your low ISOs that were okay in 24p are no longer safe. So it's like, I hate endies, especially for slow-mo. I will review a filter soon, I forgot to review it. Freewell actually sent me like a 64 ND for Sony, the big giant one, and a polarizer. So I am gonna take that out and see. I'll show you in a future video What's it like to have perfect, proper shutter speed in slow-mo? Is it any better? We will discover together, my friend. I've helped. I don't know that I helped a lot of people today, but I yelled at them, and that made me feel better. And we learned together what I didn't say you thought of yourself. So my words of bullshit helped you think of your own solution, didn't it? Yeah, and therefore I did help you. So you can support me by buying stuff through my affiliate links, and I will thank you for it after you subscribe. Buy a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. I don't even see the crop.